let's talk about Intel's 12th gen for DaVinci Resolve. I think for 95% of the people, the 12th gen is a better option than AMD Ryzen. In this video, I'm gonna explain why? Let's go. Motion VFX has an impressive portfolio of plugins for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve that will elevate your video editing process. One of the favorite is M Restyle. Diverse overlay effects plugin for DaVinci Resolve, 50 intense stylizations, glitches, retro, dreamy graphic, and more. Time is money. Let your creativity flow and use M Restyle Overlay Pack to create something unique. Motion VFX has detailed tutorial to ensure the ease of use of any of their plugins. And yes, it also works on Apple M1 Silicon. Use the code TN20 to get a 20% off. Check it out in the video description below. First of all, I want to clarify 95% of the people. It very much depends what do you do and what's your workflow. I can't slot everyone into like one bracket, so it massively depends what you do. I do think most people in the prosumer market, that is from Ryzen 5 to Ryzen 9 5950X kind of range, or from Intel i5 to Intel 12900K. We're not going to go into the Xeon chips or the Threadripper chips because that's like completely another league of things because one chip in there can cost as much as the whole PC in the prosumer market. For example, the Ryzen Threadripper Pro 3990WX costs about six or seven thousand dollars, which is just insane. You can get like three of these PCs at the same time. It's just completely a different level. So for example, if you're working in an 8K workflow or you're like maybe some kind of movie production studio, then AMD Threadripper 39 90WX is like there is no competition there at the moment and AMD is the better choice to go when we're talking about these types of things and these types of codecs you know editing feature films or something like that. It might change when we have the Intel Xeon chips coming out or 12th gen Xeon chips. Threadripper basically hasn't got any competition for the last few years. Intel hasn't got anything to offer but in the prosumer market I think Intel is a better choice and here's why. One of the main things is H.264 and H.265 encoding or hardware acceleration with these chips. Now bear in mind you have to make sure that you're not gonna get an F variant of the chips. If you don't know what I'm talking about please check out this video up there because I don't want to make this video very long but you need to have an iGPU inside the CPU. Now if you do then you're gonna have a lot of codecs being accelerated on the iGPU because the iGPU UHD 770 has media engines inside, decoders and encoders that solely focus on playing back the footage uh, on your you know CPU. So here Budget Systems has actually done a very good analysis on some of the codecs that are accelerated on the different GPUs and iGPUs on DaVinci Resolve. So when we're looking at the H.264 codec then we can see that only 8-bit 420 is accelerated. That's on any of the GPUs whether it's AMD or Nvidia for the last few series or Intel QuickSync on the 10th, 11th and 12th gen. But the big thing comes in over here with the H.265. Now as you can see over here the Intel 11th gen and 12th gen support all H.265 codecs on DaVinci Resolve. And that's a huge thing. I'm going to show you in a moment how this works actually on a timeline. But this is going to give you a much better timeline performance when editing the video. When you're doing wedding films, when you're doing some kind of online content, YouTube. Any type of content that you're creating which uses mirrorless camera footage, most likely H.264 or H.265. This will be accelerated on Intel's chips. Now another tip over here for you is if you are using your mirrorless camera and it supports or it can record in multiple different formats then highly recommend using H.265 codec if you're editing on DaVinci Resolve because it's just going to give you a very smooth timeline performance when you're playing it back. And why is it so good if you're thinking well I already got an Nvidia you know RTX 3090. Well even the 3090 can't play back on half of the codecs. Look at this Nvidia RTX 3000 series cards 8-bit 422 can't play back. 10-bit 422 which is a very very normal codec. The Canon R5 we're going to show you this in a moment. You can't play this back on here. All of the loads going to go on CPU and most likely your CPU is not going to be able to play this back because it's very very hard to play back. Even the Ryzen 9 
5950X is struggling to play this back on like full speed. Whereas now in here, I have an i5 12600K. We're gonna show you this in a moment. You're gonna see it's actually playing it back, no problem. And 12-bit 422 can't play back on an Nvidia GPU either so that's a huge thing but to take this further you might be saying well i already have a very good gpu why don't i save a little bit of money and go with the kf chip that doesn't have an igpu inside and i'm going to save a little bit of money the thing is both of these gpus igpu and your dedicated graphics card like here we have an rtx 3060 over here very budget version and our igpu inside the cpu they can work together and davinci resolve is smart enough to know that whenever you play back certain codec which decoder is better whether the dedicated graphics card or the igpu inside for example this one over here if you press play over here this is a hisha 265 50 frames per second 420 and if you go to our task manager i can see that our nvidia gpu is actually playing back as you can see the decoding is on this nvidia graphics card by the way this encoding is just me recording the screen over here but the decoding is happening on the gpu even though both of these gpus can play back this footage as you can see h265 10-bit 420 it's accelerated on all of them yet davinci resolve chooses nvidia card because it thinks it's better at utilizing these encoders rather than intel's own ones but if you move on to for example this 422 this is h265 4k 24 frames per second if you press play over here now check what happens over here our igpu now over here the decoder is playing this back so it's using both of them as you can see and that's a very very good thing now you might be saying hey i'm not seeing my intel igpu here in dusk manager that means that it's probably disabled from bios and you need to turn it on it's very easy to do let me know if you want me to make a video about this comment below if you want me to make this but it's playing this back and that's very very good now you also have to make sure that your davinci resolve has it turned on so when you go to preferences system and decode options look make sure that your nvidia and intel quicksync both of these are selected or this whole section needs to be selected in order for davinci resolve to utilize both of these gpus so basically when you're buying intel's chips you're basically getting an extra free igpu or gpu that can help you decode your codecs on your video editing program especially in davinci resolve and the cool thing about these intel chips is that there is the same igpu inside in the lower end chips and the higher end chips most likely most of them like have some kind of igpu inside that can decode these obviously like the bigger chips sometimes have a better igpu for example the igpu in a 12900k is not the same as on 12400 12400 is a little bit of a weaker igpu and only has one media engine but there is still an igpu inside for comparison if you look at amd's ryzen 5600x or 5800x in fact 5900x or 5950x neither of them have this like igpu inside neither of them have the decoding option on the cpu which means all the power just gets through the performance cores and the cpu has to take the hard work rather than having a dedicated igpu inside the cpu to play these back and this makes even bigger of a difference when we go to the lower end of the chips for example 12400 feel free to check out that review on my channel if you want to build a budget system with a budget cpu then intel has a much better option for you with the 12400 it's a six core chip and it has an igpu inside and you can just play back the footage over there and it will accelerate your timeline performance which will be much better than the amd variants for the same price range and last of all it's the price now there is lower end and higher end cpus for the 12th gen like intel has so many different options for like every single price budget range you know whatever you have there's something over there for you lots of different i5s i7s i9s loads of different ones you might be saying that the whole system cost might be you know more on the intel system than on the amd system and i will partially agree with you because some of the higher end motherboards are very expensive but at the same time you can get budget motherboards for around 150 170 180 or 200 dollars that offer very good features and can support the 12th gen chips 
so no problem over there. So it kind of works out the same. The only suggestion for you over here is make sure you go DDR4 at the moment, depending when you're watching this, but at the point of making this video, DDR5 is a very expensive kind of luxury at the moment. The availability isn't so big huge which means that ddr5 costs much much more so i would highly recommend you go with the ddr4 12th gen motherboard and then get some budget ram for there and then you can really get your system cost down for the same price that what you would getting an amd system for and that's why intel is a better option for you at least i think for the same best bang for buck now i've changed my opinion because last year amd was the better option because like for 5000 series versus 11th gen or 10th gen ryzen 5000 was a much better option for you but now with the 12th gen honestly the tables have turned and i think for most people intel is the better pick another thing you might be saying is that hey i might need a better cooling if i go with intel's chip and you know that's why i don't want to go with this honestly that's a little bit exaggerated problem the problem isn't that bad at all for example i'm running 10 core i5 12600k over there it runs at like 85 watts from the socket no problem at all if we move to the i7 then yeah we're pulling probably like 170 190 watts something like that or even more sometimes but then at that point i think you already have a 360 millimeter aio in your budget when you're going with i7 or i9s that's going to be fine anyway it's just intel chips for i7s and i9s are going to run a little bit hotter than you're used to but it's still completely okay that makes sense so hopefully this showed you why i think intel's 12 gen is a little bit better option for davinci resolve video editors than the amd equivalent options for the same price range at this point of making the video i would very much like to hear what your thoughts are in the comment section below if you want to check out this pc over here i've got a build guide i've got a why these parts everything on the channel over here i'm gonna leave the spec list in the description below as well if you want to check it out likes if you enjoyed it subs if you'd like to see more and i'll see you next time bye bye